Hi guys, my name is Bobby, and welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be doing my review of Richard Lehman's The Seller. I'll put a picture of the cover right there. This is the first book in publication order um, through my for my read through. So this is the first one that's not a part of a compilation series he wrote with some other author about that was like westerns and some other small series. This is book one in a trilogy. It's the Beast House trilogy. They're not done like a set like you would, like a normal author would. Like this one is book one and then the next book isn't released till like five or six years later and there's tons of other standalones in between. So I won't be reading those like as a trilogy. I will read them as they come up in publication order. So this book was published in 1980. It is set in, what was it? Like, I can't even remember what state it was set in. First of all, let me start off by saying this book was absolute trash. Like, I love Richard Lehman, but you can totally tell that this was the beginning of his career before he got, like, really good with the plot. Like, the plot wasn't necessarily predictable. It was just stupid and, like, unnecessarily not gruesome because all of his books are gruesome and, like, really trigger warning heavy. But it was just, oh, my God. Like, I was reading it going... Seriously? Seriously? Because I th this is one I hadn't read before. Um, most of the books that I've read of his that I really love are from late 80s, early 90s. So they're like right af after he got his footing and was more like set into like his writing style and was way more developed and better. <laughs> this was just terrible. Um, but I mean, it, I still have to read it and it's funny and, and I like to watch the progression of an author. So this is a way for me to watch the progression of him like starting out being absolute shit garbage dumpster fire and like moving in to like where he's got his groove. I mean, a lot of people would consider Richard Lehman a dumpster fire because he is not, he is like the spatter, he's kind of like a splatterpunk horror writer and after reading this one I remember why they categorize him as that a lot. Um, because he does have a lot of gore, and it's not necessarily gratuitous, but it is, it's horror. Like, it is a lot of body horror. Um, I haven't read The Ruins yet, but think The Ruins, because for everything I've heard, it's tons of body horror and almost slasher film-like. A lot of his books kind of have that, where it's very, a lot of body horror, and, but with Richard Lehman, he does have a lot of sexual horror, so, um, I know some of his books that I've read that what I can remember do include rape or sexual assault, this book it does is exactly the same. It does have a lot of trigger warnings. Only this sexual assault is against a child, which makes it even worse. I mean, it doesn't go into horrifically graphic detail. It's more implied than anything else, but you know what's taking, you know what's going to happen. Like, a lot of it's implied. A lot of the stuff that's actually on the page, I mean, it's not, like, necessarily graphic, graphic, like you would read in, um, like, a smutty book but it is very much implied um and you can totally tell this this was like one of his first novels so like the plot um starts out and you have donna and her daughter sandra and so there's kind of like kind of two separate you get two points of view no three points of view but donna and sandra are kind of like the main ones and donna's the mom and sandra's the daughter and they are are they in california I think it's California I want to say like I can't remember the state like I don't know if it was actually mentioned or not I finished this like a week ago should have done this review like immediately after I read it but um, I, it doesn't matter where they're at they're in the United States um and so she gets word that her husband is getting let out of prison and so she immediately packs up her daughter and they leave because he is highly abusive and they know that he will come after them so they immediately get in their car and they leave um, they get stuck in this fog, they get in an accident, and then they get stuck in this small town. Well, in this small town, there's this big house, and it's called the Beast House. And it's been there since, like, 1910 or somewhere, like, way back then. And it's not haunted, but they say that there's a beast that roams the house at night, and he kills. So, you know, like, nobody lives in the house. I mean, there's somebody who still owns the house. But they do not live in the house anymore. And in the house that these people who own it live in has no windows, so the beast can't get them. So through the whole book, you're trying to decide, well, is the beast real? Is it a human who's just murderous? Or is this an actual, like, supernatural beast? Like, and, you know, it's like, ooh. So the mom and the daughter are there, Donna and Sandra are there, and they're stuck in this town. So, of course, they take her to the house, and they kind of get sucked into the mystery of the house. And then you have this other guy and this, these two other men 
Um, what are their names? I, I, I'm such a terrible person. And I'm not going to pull up the ebook on my phone because that would take forever. Um, I will put it on the screen. But there's these two men. And one is like he's a hunter of monsters, he says. And the other one, um, I think his name's like Paul or Peter, maybe. I think it's a P name. But when he was a child, he was in the beast house with his friend. And his friend was killed by the beast. And he saw it and he escaped. So he's kind of traumatized. But he wants the beast to die. So he goes with this guy who's the hunter, um, beast hunter or whatever. And so they're also in the town. So you get a little bit of their perspective as well. And they meet up with Donna and Sandra and they kind of become friends with them as Donna's waiting for her car to be fixed so they can escape. And then Donna's abusive husband, Roy, who is like the psycho mean baddie of the story besides the beast, you get his point of view also of him getting out of prison and him trying to track them down. And this is what I remember, like, after reading this, I remember this from a lot of Richard Lehman's books, that you usually get your protagonist's point of view, and this is the person who, you know, like, is the good guy, like, trying to escape the horror or whatever, and then you get the perspective of the bad guy. So the serial killer, the crazy psycho, the stalker, the whatever, you get their point of view as well, and that's where a lot of the, the crazy, creepy horror comes in, because his bad guys are horrifically bad like they are terrible characters and so you get all three and it all everything comes to a head like in the beast house and so that's where that all tears you know ties in so everything comes to a head there and then the ending okay so I rated this book two stars um I don't want to give any spoilers because in case you really do want to read it I'm telling you it's a complete dumpster fire I would not read it like, I would ne I'm never going to reread this one. This one was terrible. Um, I can't wait till I get down the line to, like, some of my favorites of his, like, once he got his footing. Um, but, yeah, this was terrible. Like, it was not, it was not good. Um, I mean, and the ending was kind of, like, okay. Like, if I haven't read the other Beast House books, and I didn't before, and I think I skipped over them, like, my mom had gotten them because I hadn't read the first one or whatever because you should read them in order. Um, I don't know if the other ones may be a little better because, I mean, this was literally the first book. Like, it was written in 1980. I mean, and it very much has that 70s, 80s horror vibe with a lot of graphic content. So, I mean, I guess you can give it a little bit of leeway for that, but let's be real. So, yeah, two stars. Definitely only two stars. Um, I'm Anybody who does not want spoilers, feel free to click off now because now I'm going to get into spoilers about why I really hated it and, like, what really sucked. So, you know, if you really want to try to read it on your own, I mean, it's a short book. It's only like, I think it's under 300 pages. I can't remember. I think it's like 275 or somewhere on there. It's not very long. So if you want to go read it, it's free on Kindle Unlimited. You go right ahead. I warned you. It's a dumpster fire. Um, but yeah, so now I'm going to get into spoilers. So buy non-spoiler people. Okay. This book. Okay, so Roy is a terrible, horrific human being. And the reason he was in prison is because he molested and raped his daughter, which it was Sandra. So Donna's daughter, Sandra. He also beat the shit out of Donna as much as he possibly could. Very abusive. But he loves little girls. Like, and the way that it's described, like, he likes girls between the ages of, like, 8 and 12. Like, before they're really developed, where they're still, like, young, they have not entered puberty, he is one sick fuck. Like, he is disturbing and the thing about Richard Lehman is he puts you in their head so you get to hear all their nasty gross thoughts and it's oh I mean and I can handle that like I mean yeah I mean it's not it's not a good thing to be reading like it's it's hard to read but I mean I don't have that many triggers like nothing really triggers me and I have kids of my own and stuff but like I can put myself out of it like this is just a story it's not real or whatever so like but I mean, seriously, trigger warning, like, if you do not, if you cannot read Abuse of a Child, do not, under any circumstance, read this book. And so Roy gets out of prison, and he comes to find them. Of course, Donna and Sandra are already gone. He goes to their apartment, where he, he looked in the phone book, and she was not unlisted, but this was also 1980. Um, and so it was, like, D, and then her last name. And so he finds them, like, or finds the house. They're not there in the apartment. He kicks down the door, discovers they've left, obviously. So what does he do? He's got to find a way to get a vehicle and all this stuff. So, you know, he just murders people along the way to steal vehicles. No big deal. But the first house he breaks into, that which is like literally a couple houses 
like it's a couple streets behind where Donna and Sandra lived. And he picks the house because it has a little girl's bike outside. He breaks into the house. He murders the father right away because he comes down to investigate the noise. The mom comes down and he like it stabs her quite a few times. Like so he injures her. But then he finds the girl. The girl is like she's 10. She says she's 10. And that poor child like she is put through hell through the entire book and like I said like the sexual abuse is not described in detail it is implied so I mean you can make it up in your head I think the most that they actually he actually had said was you know like describing how he liked her body like it's terrible like um he liked how young her body was that she was not developed how smooth her skin was like I think the most physically it says like is putting um his hand on her thigh like so but you know it's implied like what he's going to do to her at this point I start talking about a really kind of bad scene in the book and after watching this and editing I've decided that I'm not going to include it because you'll have to read for yourself and it's not it's graphic but it's not super bad to where like everything is really described but it just makes me too uncomfortable to talk about so I'm cutting it out I mean it's so cringy but and and I mean it is to show how deplorable this character is and how terrible he is and the reason he's chasing Donna and Sandra is not because he wants Donna it's because he wants his daughter so he can abuse her I mean and that's he's deplorable and Richard Lehman is really big on like the most deplorable sickening disgusting characters and I understand that but the ones that are down the road that I remember were written better and it didn't seem like it was just placed there like it almost seemed unneeded like, I understand he's a terrible, horrible person and that he abused his daughter and that's why he's going after her. And I understand him being a terrible character and he's been in prison for seven years. Or, I think it's like seven years because the daughter, I think, now is... Sandra's like 14, 13. So when he's put into prison, she was like seven, eight years old. Um, so it was, you know, he wants his daughter. And, you know, so I understand, like, the stealing of the girl and stuff, but... He carries her through the entire story. He takes her with. Like, he doesn't kill her or whatever. He kills adults, but he never kills her. Like, at the end, she, uh, there's this scene that happens where um, they're trying to... They've found Donna and Sandra, and he's trying to get into, like, their room to hide and wait for them. And he gets in or whatever, and there's this girl that sees them, this 14-year-old girl that sees them. And so they manage to get away, and the little girl manages to get away, and she hides for a long time until... He's way long gone. So she does live in the end and, you know, all that stuff. But both of her parents are dead and she's been highly traumatized for like a week. You know, like severely sexually abused and highly traumatized. But I mean, she lives, so I guess that's a plus. Like, eh. So for me, it was like, that wasn't really necessary. Like, you could have said that he abducted the girl and carried her with, but you didn't really need like we know that he's a sexual sadist and a sex you know like and totally sexually disgusting like and loves girls little girls you didn't need to really show all that and I know it was more for the shock factor and this is where it kind of goes really onto the splatterpunk because it's definitely for the shock value factor and with it being as old as it is like I mean it would have been definitely shocking so I mean I get that but it was just it was like almost too much like you didn't like, even when he met up with his daughter, like, when they, when there's the confrontation, like, he makes a comment to her, like, you know, I'm coming for you, whatever. That's fine. Like, I understand, like, he is a sexual predator, and he was coming after her because he wants his daughter in a not okay way. And that comment, okay, that's fine. You didn't need to carry that poor girl with you for the entire time. Like, you, it, it was, it was just tough. That was tough to read. The rest of it was just kind of stupid. Like, the actual beast was dumb like it was totally dumb it was not a human it was an actual beast they don't explain he doesn't explain where it comes from it kind of lives underground like it is like a humanoid like beast so I don't know if it was like an inbred human like or mixed with something else but it was like the same beast from like the 1900s and the owner had found the diary of the original one that lived there and like she became and she was in love with this beast even though he's not really attractive or whatever but I guess, like, she felt sexually drawn to this beast, so she slept with him, and then, like, I guess the sex was amazing, so she bred with the beast and made more of them, and so, like, the beast kind of gets to roam the house at night, but, you know, doesn't ever leave the area, and he moves through the town, through tunnels, and there's multiple ones, and, like, 
it was just really convoluted and just weird. And, like, at the end, like, the two guys that were helping Donna, like, the hunter and the guy that experienced the beast when he was a kid, they both die. Roy dies. He gets killed by the beast. So that was kind of a nice comeuppance. Like, you know, the beast totally slaughters him and, like, beats his head in and, like, you know, rips him to shreds. So that was a, that was a fun body horror. It was like, yes, like, the ni nasty piece of shit got his, got his due. So, I mean, that was nice. But then, like, Donna and Sandra, like, they get, they end up in the other house, the owner's house with no windows. It's across the street from the beast house. I don't know if this makes any sense because the whole book didn't really make sense. So, like, me trying to explain it is going to sound so stupid. But they end up in the house because she's trying to find the hunter who is killing off these multiple beasts. And, like, he kills off, I think, six of them. And then... Like, it, he, one of them actually, no, the owner gets him and, like, ends up shooting him or whatever and killing him. But now Donna and Sandra are trapped in this house. So what do they do? They, since they, you know, he killed six of their beasts, they lock these two women in the sh in the cellar. And so, like, Donna's, like, in her, I think she's, like, in her mid-early 30s. And then her daughter is, like, 15. And they brainwash the daughter. So the daughter thinks this is great and wonderful. And they lock him down in there and pretty much use them for the beast sex slaves to make more beasts. So, like, Donna already, at the end of the book, she thinks she's pregnant, and it's going to be with this beast baby. And, like, there's Sandra going, oh, like, well, I wonder which beast it was. Was it Jason or blah, blah, blah? And, like, oh, I hope I get pregnant by this one. It's like, what? Like, this is so dumb. Like, oh, my God. Like, I can't believe, like, this was the first book. Like, this makes, like, do I really want to continue? Yes, I do. And I will continue. Anyways, to wrap this um, ridiculous review up, this book was two stars. I should have given it one. I only gave it two because it's Richard Lehman and it was his first, first book, like his first foray into the genre. So I'll give him a little leeway on that, I guess. Um, but yeah, don't read it. It's a dumb story. It's terrible. Like the story was terrible. I'm not looking forward to the other two Beast House ones that are coming up. I hope to God they're better. Um, I hope as I keep going, it'll get better. I already know, like, some of my favorites are coming up, like, six or seven books down the line. And I know they're good. I love them. Um, so I know things will get better. It's just getting through these first books are going to be rough, I'm pretty sure. Like, obviously, book one was kind of tough. So I know it'll be rough getting through these first ones. Um, you guys wanted a single review. You got it. I don't read it. All right, guys. That's it. That is my review for The Cellar. Please let me know if you decided to read this dumpster fire. I hope none of you did, um, because you'll probably unsubscribe and think I'm a nutso for wanting to read his books. <laughs> um, I swear they do get better. This was terrible. Um, but yeah, I will see you guys later. Bye.